Hey there, this is another demo of the DLU dangling logic unit. Today I implemented a simple memory controller. As you can see in my specs documentation, this is the memory map and you can see this in interval here. This is for IO. Now, in the assembly, the new program today, you can see the upper part here, 9,000. We have, we have to load addresses in, in two parts. And um, you can see that 9,000, so we know IO, it's IO. And the bottom part, this eight, that's mapped to LEDs. So we, so we load that address into DR0, dangling register zero or dangreg as I call it. All of this has dangling somewhere in it or dang because the platform is called dangling or dangling logic unit is, is the core and, and MISC is the architecture. Doesn't really matter right now. Then we have another address. This is the address of the switches. So the switches are memory mapped to this address. So they're at the base of uh, the 9K uh, upper uh, at the base of the interval. So you can see that all of these switches are mapped there and all of the LEDs are right above here. You've seen, you've seen them before. And since we have the same amount, each one can control one LED. And that's exactly what we do. So these are just the number of the instructions. Each instruction is four bytes. So we have zero, four, eight, C, 10, etc. cetera, uh, in hex, of course. So this is the loop address. Now that means that the jump will jump to 18 here. And 18, as you can see, is here, 18. So this is effectively the loop and it will loop forever. So we have a load, we load the address. Uh, then this is just a knob basically, or no op. Um, it's, it doesn't do anything pretty much. Um, technically it should zero DR4, um, but it's just there to, to fill up space. Uh, th there's a reason behind it. I'm going to go into it later when we're actually going through the code at some point. I, I, I want to do that, but um, there'll be a time. I don't know when, maybe next month. And then we store. And, th and then of course we jump back so that we loop. And that's what you see now. And I'll show you one more thing. Actually, a few more things. So the RGB2R, because there are two RGB LEDs here. You may see them if it focuses again. I'm gonna have to solve this somehow. Uh, the focus issue. Oh, it switched lenses now. So you can see these two are RGB LEDs. These are only uh, single color, monochromatic, but these are uh, RGBs. So the one on the, the one to the left is number two. You can see number two, red. And whenever we write to memory, it turns on, which you can see. So now back to S assembly. This is the store and when this instruction occurs the red led lights up so that's a helper and a debugging tool so that you can track what's what's happening now i'll briefly show you the the controller um there we go here we go so since uh, if you look at the map again, since IO has a nine here, and this, this first bit or 31st technically, um, or th 32nd, but zero indexed, so 31st, it's not zero. And I haven't implemented um, CPU control exceptions, nothing like that is implemented uh, currently. So 
it is enough to delineate between application memory and IO memory or uh, memory mapped IO by just telling if the 31st bit is zero or not. And that's what we do here. So you can see this conditional and we say that, okay, so if it is true, if, if this statement is, uh, or if this, uh, if this evaluates the true, then this is the LED output. Uh, this is the IO operation to the memory mapped IO device, which are the LEDs in, in this case. And you can see here the, the eight at the end, and you saw that in the assembly as well. Um, here, right? And these are core devices, so that's why they're hard-coded. Um, stuff like uh, sound cards and uh, video devices, which I'm planning on much later, those will be done differently. Those will not be hard-coded, but things like uh, keyboards, um, timers, LEDs, uh, PC speakers, um, this doesn't have a PC speaker, um, but those devices are usually hard-coded. On x86, for example, these are all hard-coded. So I decided to do that as well because those are like, you can't really like remove them. I mean, you can, but you really shouldn't. So they might as well be hard-coded. Uh, if we have a pluggable device, like these PMOD headers, like if I design a sound card, which I will eventually, I'll plug it in here then yes, that's a detachable device, so that'll, that won't be hard-coded, but these are hard-coded. And down here you see reading a switch and reading these buttons, these one, two, three, four, five, these buttons, uh, they're not used currently, just red, and then output to the LEDs. So if you look at the assembly again, you see that we write, we, we read the value of the switches and write it to the appropriate LED. So let's say this one, it'll take a few cycles to update and you'll see it light up. Yeah, there we go. Now uh, let's try another one. Yeah, there we go. Now I will raise the clock so that you can see it go at its native frequency. Well, technically it's not gonna be the native frequency because it doesn't meet uh, timing constraints at that frequency, which is 100 megahertz, but it's gonna be half of that. So it, you'll, you'll see the difference very, very quickly once I once I rewrite, okay, so now it's synthesizing, then it's gonna implement, and then it's gonna generate a byte stream and write it over the J JTAG interface to the uh, to the board. And that, that takes about 58 seconds. So in just a moment, you'll see it. And then I'll, I'll bring these actually to false. And you'll see that then the heartbeat LED will be much brighter. The red LED will be pretty much constantly on. And then these state changes or state toggles of the, through the switches will be reflected on the LEDs immediately. And now it's the, the final phase and you'll see it in just a bit. Yes, it's gonna write it's stream and then over JTAG to the to the board. And you can see 58.6 seconds. And yeah, there we go. So now as you can see, the blue LED is much brighter and you may also see the, the red almost always on, at least to the human eye, you can effectively say that it's constantly on. And now, any of the switches state is reflected immediately. So the memory controller's role is to distinguish between a an application memory operation and an IO memory operation. So a device operation that is 
that is mapped to memory. So an I.O. device that's mapped to memory and an operation on, on, on that. Uh, I, I call it in this, uh, in this architecture, I call it application memory and I.O. memory. And that's the nomenclature that I, that I picked for this. And uh, it, it makes sense. So that's what I'm gonna refer to it from now on. So the memory controller delineates between the two uh, based on the, the simple uh, evaluation that I ex explained before. Once there are exceptions and uh, CPU control uh, operations, then that'll, that'll require another check to see if, okay, are we starting with eight? So is the 31st bit eight or is it nine? But other than that, it's pretty simple. So that's the update for today. Next thing is serial. Uh, I was debugging, let me quickly show you. I had two bugs in my ALU and it took me about three hours to debug even though they're simple. You can see it in the pink because that's a git diff uh, change. So it shows that I modified that. And what I was doing accidentally uh, here in the CPL, I was reading uh, operand A, I believe. Operand B, actually, you can see that that's in white. Operand B. Only. And that, that only resulted in a half copy, pretty much. And same with here, um, CPL. This is CPH, this is CPL. I, I think I always mix them up because I had to add that uh, second half later. I forgot it initially. We can check the uh, the docs, and yeah, CPL is last, and CPH is um, is the first one. So CPH and CPL, and yeah, so operand B, operand B. So originally, I was only assigning operand B, operand B, but that's only half the operation. Uh, or technically it is actually the full operation instead of half the operation because CPH is copy high and CPL is copy low. You don't want to copy the entire register, only half of it, because it's a half a copy, if that makes sense. And, and CPY is a full copy. So I, I can delineate between a, a full copy and a half copy, but I was doing a full copy here. So that, that was corrupting things. It took me a while to figure out, but now that that is working, um, these controls are all are all working as well, and now I can move on to serial. It's gonna be the things like th this are gonna be much easier to debug through serial than by printing opcodes and register states to the LEDs in binary, which is how I discovered this. So serial is gonna be much better for this. Uh, the interface is UART or the protocol, and um, then I can print characters to my desktop. And after that, I want to do something with audio. So that's the plan. Next update will most likely be about serial, unless I do something in between, but I don't think so. The plan is uh, to do serial, um, and I'm gonna most likely do that tomorrow because I'm tired at this point, pretty much. Um, the debugging really drained me. So anyway, um, see you next time.